It's Two on the Aisle with me, Charles Gross, and Leslie Hoban Blake. Tonight reviews of Moulin Rouge, The Rolling Stone, Mojada, Coriolanus, and Seawall slash A Life. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Two on the Aisle. I am Leslie slash Hoban slash Blake. <laughs> yes, okay. And are we going to be slashing Shem's shows tonight? Well, or are we yeah, going it to... may happen. It has happened in, a, in the past. It may happen okay, again. Okay, indeed. So, so we shall start off with Moulin Rouge. This is an actual nightclub in Paris, 130 mm -hmm. years old. I've been old. there. Have you never been there? I have never I been have to been France, there. unfortunately. That's it's a tourist kind trap of now. <laughs> okay. It's a tourist trap now. But okay. Yeah. Um, and, of course, there was the movie with Nicole Kidman. That's what this is. Uh, yes. And now there is the Broadway musical. This is a true jukebox musical because, <laughs> like a jukebox, it uses a wide <laughs> array of, of music. It's like everything <laughs> from Rodgers and Hammerstein to Elton John to Lady Gaga. And Lady Marmalade. <laughs> yes. And there, of course, and in the middle of it all is Danny Burstein, who comes on stage and he, you know, singing in this outlandish outfit, uh, singing, We'll Come. Oh, I'm sorry. No, uh, wrong, wrong show. <laughs> well, it, the interesting thing is Cabaret, I think, is the only show they don't take any music from, but, you know, I'm, th I'm just waiting for the night where Joel Gray comes out with him. In fact, you know what? Oscar, uh, no, Tony's, you have your next opening. You have to both come out for the opening number. So we're invited to this beautiful, I'm sorry, beautiful club. Here's the plot. Handsome young American author who has just arrived in Germany, I mean France, and he falls in love with the club's leading lady, uh, Sally, no, I'm sorry, Satine. Okay, uh, people are going to be very confused. You've got to stop doing it now. Just go and, through it. Okay. And they fall in love, and he's talented, but broke, and he, he's writing the next show, but here's where the plot uh, thickens. Gets, thickens, yes, or it gets a little lumpy at any rate. There's this rich duke who also loves Satine, and the club is failing, and if he doesn't put money in and save the club, they're all going to be out on the street. So, of course, she has to go with him, or will she? And they have this guy, this is um, Tam Mutu. He's very, he's really. he's very villain. He does everything but twirl his mustache. But he's and also go, very sexy. Nyah, ha, but he's ha, also very he sexy. Is. He's a he, sexy he villain. He is. But is so, is, so is Aaron Tevet as... Uh, well, Aaron's fight as, is a... As, as, as Christian. Aaron's fight is a twit. Christian, yeah. No, he's, he's an absolute twit. He has no... The character. The character. Yes. But this is, this is a combination of La Boheme and Traviata. And yes, Cabaret, I hadn't thought of that. But you're absolutely right. That is a very good analogy. But, but you know what? This is really not something you can take seriously because no, no. at the end... Uh, no, I was going <laughs> to bet the farm Well, <laughs> Satine beautifully played by Karen Olivio yeah, she in the nice uh, lives, I mean, um, Nicole Kidman role. Uh, dies at the end. And so how does the show react? Big kick-ass encore number. I mean, you come in, there's an elephant to your right, a windmill to your left. I mean, it's a well, combination the of the actual club. windmill is because Moulin Rouge is red windmill. That's right. what it means in French. Okay. The elephant is because that's the exterior of the thing they built for her, and then we see the inside. Right. That's her private little right. sanctum sanctorum. Look, looks like they found some old amusement park and just you know gathered it up. You know what you didn't mention? That this is also like the way it's mm -hmm. staged is the great comet. Yes. They come out into the audience. This, this, there's a circular piece in the front, and the audience is sitting in between the two. Right. The point is it's a pastiche of everything you've ever heard of and some stuff you don't want to hear of. And uh, it was not the best thing I've ever seen. I mean, I liked Moulin Rouge, the movie. The movie. I, I had a good time. I, I have to confess, I really have want to see it, but I have not. Okay, well, it doesn't matter because it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have changed. You know, the thing is, if you've seen it, then you know that this is what it's made of. Right. But it certainly didn't need to be a Broadway musical. It was already a, 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 a movie musical. So why, you know what I'm saying? And, and they well, took the same songs. They added a lot more songs to mm -hmm. it. Um, I just don't understand why. You know, well, where is the originality? There is no, that's why I was so excited about something like Strange Loop that was original. And poor Danny Burstein, who is such a wonderful performer, is stuck in the middle of... Oh, I thought he did a wonderful well, job. he did a wonderful job with nothing. I mean, the bottom line is you come in, you're, you're surrounded by the, the, the Derek McLean's scenic design and the skimpy costumes by Catherine Zuber and the beautiful girls can-canning mm -hmm. and dancing. You know, it's this put-your-brain-in-park and just... <laughs> 
enjoy well, this that's, overblown, know, elaborate okay. I like show. I put my, my, my brain in gear when I go to the theater. You know, it, it, and I'm, I don't drive, so I hope that's the right analogy. That, that is the right, the right analogy, term. yes. But, but, you know, but, mm, look, you know. look th th think of it. Remember, remember um, uh, Escape to Margaritaville. Oh, 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 yes. Oh, you had to remind me of that one, huh? <laughs> I have almost of, gotten it out of my head. Kind, kind of along the same time, only a much more varied music and, and a much more elaborate. Well, uh, it was more production. source material than just the one. Yes, you know? well, yes. Uh, yeah, well, it, if you're looking for, you know, I just think that out-of-town tourists are going to go crazy over it. Probably. By the way, it's done something that only Hamilton did. It's got mm -hmm. a gigantic prices. It, it's making money hand over fist. Yeah. They now have a special VIP ticket that's eight hundred dollars, which is outrageous. They let you sit on the elephant. Yes, if only. So your conclusion, okay. Ms. Blake? Ah, uh, disappointment. I wish I could give it more for for the people in it, for the hard work that they're doing. Mm -hmm. We didn't even mention uh, the person playing Toulouse Lautrec, who's a very important character. Who we he just, we just saw him play Bozeman in Bozeman and Lena, yeah. and his name is Saigu. I'm going to get it wrong. Uh, no, I got it right. Sa Sar Nagala. Sar Nagala. Who we've seen several times. We also saw him do Malima the Elephant, yes, if you remember. I do. And I'm not sure how I feel about his playing of Toulouse Lautrec, but it was interesting casting, certainly. Possibly the most interesting thing on the stage in that sense. More than the elephant? More than the elephant, because okay. the elephant was not on stage, the elephant and was on the side. Out of zero to five playbills, ah. five being the best. Oh, God. Because of all the work, and I know three. Okay, I would go 3.75. Okay. I think, but remember, this is for what it is. Okay. <laughs> We're going to now call our show Two on the Out for what it is. <laughs> My next show is, I think, a very good play and extremely original. It is The Rolling Stone. And The Rolling Stone is not the song, but it is the newspaper. And that's so intriguing because this is a play that takes place in Uganda. And it is um, about a family, a uh, young man whose uh, uncle is the, uh, or his brother, brother. Is his older brother. His older brother has just been made. Has just been made the, the head of the church that they all belong right, the to. Pastor. And it's, a, it's an American evangelical, I couldn't think of the right word, it's an American evangelical Protestant church. And so their, their uh, morals come from that ethos and so it happens that the young man is gay and well no no not, not the, pa the past the, the, young past, man, the younger brother okay I said, I'm, okay I'm, just, I'm I started just clarifying. talking about okay. the young man you didn't Sorry. have to thank you the young man whose uncle whose brother, brother is the is the pastor the young man is gay he has not come out to his family he's not come out to anybody and we, the opening scene is the, the two young men in a boat and, and we realize that they're in love, and one of them is visiting from, it was from Britain or from America? I don't recall. I believe it's America. I don't remember. I don't it doesn't remember. matter. V visiting, um, he's a doctor. He's a doctor. And, and, and they have it, a relationship. And they have an inappropriate relationship, which is bad enough, except that in Uganda, it is punishable by imprisonment, death. Your family is, 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 is involved. Uh, the, your family is, is shunned. And this young man's brother has just been made pastor. Right. Plus, of there's the this church. McCartney like press out there. McCarthy. To, McCarthy, excuse me. Uh, just waiting to expose people. Well, it, it was the Rolling Stone, their, their paper, not our Rolling Stone Obviously. magazine, their Rolling Stone newspaper. And on the front page, they would print the names of all the homosexuals who were called Kuchu. Kuchu, I believe, is the word. And so Kuchu was written across the front of things. And. and it turns out that they've been seen. Point is that the the young man is so torn. He has not come out. He was. He, he and he, he is he going to run away? Is he going to stay? What's going to happen? And what's going to happen to his family? His there, there's, there's another character who's who's who an important neighbor well, would like Mama. to see him marry. Yes, Mama, played by played by our good friend Myra Lucretia Taylor. Right. And a, wonderful. She's a villain, and she does a wonderful job. Yes. Right? Yes. You, you don't but, know at first but, that she's a villain. She's a yenta. Whatever the Whatever the Ugandan word for Yenta is, that's what she is. She's in everybody's business, mm -hmm. and she wants her daughter to marry this young man. Mm -hmm. And there's a very uncomfortable scene where they go out in the boat, right. and, and they're supposed and, to and be the, And the daughter is, is temporarily mute, or she, she, she's she can't talk. She's mute for some—we don't know what the reason right. is. Plus, the, these two brothers have a sister 
who is a brilliant student uh, and, it, and wants right, to yeah. go to, and wants yes, to go to medical right. school. Okay. okay, what I loved about this play mm -hmm. is that you know we, we've had so many plays over the years detailing the gay the gay experience. Mm -hmm. Here we have one that. All right, the ground is familiar, but told in a different setting, mm -hmm. in a different way, where it doesn't feel like a rehash of plays that mm -hmm. were written 30 mm -hmm. years ago. It's it's new, it's exciting, and you know it it hits it hits and home. It's about something that's really happening. I mean, I went home and looked it up, and it turns out that these these laws are still on the books. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that they're being. I, I, it's just so hideous to think of. This is directed by Sahim Ali. And it's uh, the sets were by Anolfo Mal Mal Maldonado. Mm -hmm. I got that right, Maldonado. And it's written by Chris Urch. Chris Urch is white, so it's really interesting that he chose this subject uh, to, to write about. Um, he's British, and and this play was first done in, in London. Um, I just I agree with you. It, it, it's new territory. It's a new anyway. What he wrote he wrote this there's, there's a, a playwright's note. It says in 20 I'm not going to read my glasses. In 2010 they're on my head. No, they're not. Um, in 2010 the Rolling Stone newspaper in Kambala came to global prominence by publishing a front page that included pictures, names, and addresses of people who were known or suspected of being homosexuals, and that is still going on. And and so he 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 has. Given the world a terrible, shown, shown the right. world what, what a, a terrible, terrible thing and, and is going interestingly, on. probably against what is written in the Bible. I, I won't, I won't oh. go into details, but putting something like that on a paper is very knowing much that, against knowing what it would do to a family, to yeah. the people involved. Oh yes, it oh is yeah, is very much against. So, oh you know, yeah, oh yes, yeah. no, very, very striking and and well done and um, just. Yeah. And, and the cast? Oh, I thought it was I thought it was exceptionally uh, across the board. But if you'd like mm -hmm. me to read the I names, I can just of give a couple of names. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I if, 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 if you can, my, my my screen went down, so I don't yeah. have it there. All right, so here we here we go. Uh, the boy, the young boy, young man. He wasn't a young, young boy, man, but yeah. a young man was played by Otto Blankston Wood. Mm -hmm. The uh, the uh, doctor was played by Robert Gilbert. I've already mentioned by Dr. Richard his, his Taylor. Lover, yes. The uh, older brother pastor is James mm -hmm. Udom. The sister was uh, Adiniki Thomas. Okay. And uh, the girl who was uh, forced into silence is Latoya Edwards. Well, she couldn't. She couldn't talk, wasn't that? She, I said was forced, forced into okay. silence. Well, whatever. Well, for, something forced her right. into silence. She couldn't. She physically could not talk, at yeah. least until uh, the end of the play. Yes. And your and your conclusion? How would you? Well, again, because of its originality, because of the way it was acted, because of the direction. I mean, I, this is a, a four point seven five to five play for me. It's mm -hmm. it's new territory, and it makes you think. And it made me go home. And again, if it makes me go home and and, and Google it, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I become interested. All right, there we go. So, right. so um, I, I will give it four, I think. Okay. I think. I, I did enjoy it. So this is at the Public Theater. Oh, where, where is this playing now? I'm sorry. We, what, where, what we just saw? was yeah, playing up at, Link, at Lincoln Center. Lincoln Center, okay. Downstairs. So this is at the Public house. Theater. Um, I think it's upstairs. This is uh, Mojada. This is by uh, Lucas Alfreo, directed by Che Alfaro. Yu. Uh, Alfaro. excuse me. Um, directed by Che Yu. And Wait, it's it's Louis Alfaro. Sorry, Louis. Louis what did I say? You said Lucas. Oh, I'm sorry, okay. Louis. Um, so, as I said, this is a Spanish Medea uh, by way of Hester Street. It, Hester Street was the Jewish immigrant experience in the late 19th, early 20th century. This is the Mexican illegal immigration experience uh, in the 21st century. And Medea here is beautifully played uh, by Sabina Zuniga uh, Varlia. Would you Varela. like me to try to do this for you, no, Sabina no, no. Zuniga? Varlia, I think I got that. And Varela. here she, she is, yes. And she and her family, her husband, uh, the woman who was her caregiver is now the caregiver for her son, have immigrated illegally from Mexico. Her husband is an up-and-coming employee in a um, construction firm. She, for reasons we find out later in the play, just cannot leave their home. And she sews these beautifully shirts that are sold for hundreds of dollars and is ridiculously underpaid. And basically the story, the, there are two things that struck me with this story. First, we go to a flashback and watch them coming to America. Mm -hmm. And it's, for the most part, a wonderfully done sequence, but it suffers uh, from what 
Leslie Hoban Blake would call to being too long. You may not think so. I did. Because they throw every, every catastrophe that can happen, um, you know, the, the soup to nuts, the kitchen sink happens. And what starts off as a very harrowing, very dramatic experience just kind of numbs you down. I, I think uh, we saw um, last year, I think it was I Was More Alive With You. Same problem. Based on the book of Job, they just, just mm -hmm. throw everything mm -hmm. at you. And at well, the but God end, did throw everything at Job. Let's well, face yeah, it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but, um, but it becomes, you, there's a certain numb that you stop, you stop feeling because mm -hmm. you just, you're overloaded. And that was one problem I had with the play. Mm -hmm. Second problem is, and I don't know how you're going to react to this, okay. I'm kind of wondering, why do they have to do Medea? I mean, they had such a strong story with the immigration experience, with this family living here, and then you have such a sympathetic character, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, played by Sabina, mm -hmm. and then at the end, it, well, it's just hard to empathize with someone who kills her son. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering why, why he wanted to go in, in, in that direction. Because at, he can't sympathize with the husband because he, you know, does the same thing that Jason does in Medea. Mm -hmm. Medea he, can't sympathize with the mother. The son is dead. The only person you can sympathize with is uh, Socorro uh, Santiago as, as the caregiver, and they kind of put you off to the back, so there's really no one to empathize with. Okay, may I, may I speak? Please. I, I was told to let him have the whole thing, and then Two minutes, I could yes. say something. Okay. Um, first of all, Luis Alfaro has done Oedipus El Rey. Mm -hmm. It is his mission to take the Greek plays and to Latin, Latinoize them, okay. Latino, whatever that word would be. Well, mission so, accomplished. So Yes, indeed. And given that, I, it's amazing that he was able to put as much in. We come in knowing things are going to happen. We know something's going to happen to the child. It's unfortunate. We see this handsome Hassan, which is Jason with an H sound, mm -hmm. Hassan, uh, doing all of that. But there's no, the reason Alex is. Alex Hernandez. Yes, uh, sorry. I think you already mentioned his name. The only one you didn't mention was Vanilla As. Vanessa, Vanessa. As Aspilaga. Oh, she as she yes, the neighbor. Luisa, she's uh, yes. she's oh, she's, she's hilarious. A neighbor who sells churros on the street. Mm -hmm. and although she's Puerto Rican, she makes sure you know she's Puerto Rican. Yes. She's not Mexican. They are Mexican. Uh, but she but she got she she got but someone's she, cart, and so that made her <laughs> the churro lady. Right. And she's and she's also very grasping. Whatever whatever. Uh, Madea, who has no friends, offers her. She says, "I." She brings. She says, "I hear you're a very good sewer. Maybe seamstress. Maybe you'll fix this dress for me. Right. Uh, but I have no money, you know." Mm. And then she brings the material and wants another whole dress. So that's yeah, another and, story. And when the tables are turned and they need her. Oh, but mm -hmm. you know, my house is so small. I would take yes. you, but my house is yes, so but, small, I can't do But again, that's kind of the Medea story. Yeah, well, yes. Well, but Medea didn't try to get anybody to help her. Medea, no. the difference is Medea was a queen-like figure. This mm -hmm. poor woman is, is and by, by the way, mojada is, is, the, is a nasty word for west ba for wet bank. Wet back. Wet, wet back. back. I'm saying back. it all yes. wrong. Wet so back. It's wet not Medea in Spanish. No, it's not. And, and her name is Medea, which is Medea. It's the same well, name. Yeah. So anyway, um, long story short, I think, again, also, there's a, there's a magical realism aspect to this. It opens with her doing something with, with wings. She's doing a, 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 a spell. It looks like a, a some kind of a ritual that she's, te she's teaching her son. An incantation with wings, and she's teaching him that if he does this incantation, he can come home. And at the end of the play, and it's not giving anything away to say this, because I think it's already closed. Um, it, it, at the end of the play, she herself flies away. Now, it's probably that she jumps off the, the roof of the house, but she flaps the wings, and you hear the wings flapping. Right. And I thought, what a, what a, what a lovely—because that, that is the Hispanic, that is the Latino touch. Magical realism comes from—, from, right. from and, and again, it would have been a touching ending, except this woman has just killed her son. By the way, this woman has, this actress has, one of the most brilliant monologues. It goes on. You would think too long. I would think too long. I, I was mess I was on the edge of my seat. Mm -hmm. All the reasons why she can't go out. All the things that have happened to her. Mm -hmm. Everything that mm -hmm. tells us who she is. And it just was brilliant. And since we're talking about another show with monologues tonight, and uh, I thought I would bring up the fact that she did a lovely job on this. Okay. So, what would you give this? I think uh, three and three quarter. I would give it four point five. Really? I, I it. It was just that little bit, not quite exactly 
you know. All right. But it was so close. Okay. I, it I, was thought, so you were gonna, close. I thought you were going to go all the way with this. Oh, you did, huh? Because I, I was going to like throw, throw out this stuff, right? Okay. So, I did not get to see this. Yes. Yeah. All I Spe did. Speaking of uh, old playwrights, this is... Uh, old playwrights? Uh, well... <laughs> Coriolanus, this is, this is the original version. This is the uh, second show this year at the Delacorte Theater. Mm -hmm. Free Shakespeare in the Park, you gotta love it. And this is directed by Daniel Sullivan. And you know what, you know what would be, I'd like to, I'd like to see Shakespeare done innovatively sometime in New York. You know what that means? It means they actually set the play where Shakespeare wrote it. But Shakespeare, oh wait, I just have to tell you, my darling, uh, Shakespeare took his plots from other people's plays. Yes. And so they were never in a specific, they weren't written right. for Elizabethan times. Romeo and Juliet was set in a different time. Well, I, I'm aware, so Caesar this, is this, set, this in, a is set time. in Rome. Okay. But where, where has it been set? Oh. I'm not sure. I think it's either a junkyard or the set of one of the Mad Max movies. Really? Yes. Oh, okay. really? This is Coriolanus, okay. and Shakespeare is coming to tell us, well, you think politicians put their foots in their mouth with Twitter? Well, guess what? <laughs> they were doing it a thousand their, years. Their foots in their mouth? In their mouth before. <laughs> no, before their feet in their, their mouth. <laughs> well, it's your foot in your mouth. Yes. Uh, <laughs> thousands of years before Twitter. Okay. Witness Coriolanus, brilliant Roman general, Saves uh, saves Rome from their uh, from um, neighboring uh, Volscane, and they decide, hey, you know the people are clamoring for representation. Let's run this guy for office. Problem is, he doesn't have much of a rapport with the people. Ends up getting expelled from Rome. Joins up with the enemy, comes back to attack Rome, and the only thing that's standing between Rome and defeat is his mommy. Okay, so. <laughs> And mommy doesn't always know best. Let me let me well, let me tell you. Well, his particular mommy is 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 she's a, she's a, a hawk. She wants war. She always she loves war. Yeah. I mean, this I know from the play. I didn't have to right. see this. It's written into the character. She said, you know, come home on your shield or don't come home at all. You know, if you don't <laughs> kill a bunch of people, don't come home. Yeah. Um, well, so. when he, when he comes home and she realizes that Rome is about to be attacked, she tries she tries to stop, and then she's successful. And you know what? Listening to your mother in this particular case doesn't work out so well for the guy. Um, the performance here, this is uh, Jonathan Cake in I the wish title I'd seen role. Him. I like him. I, you know, you may like him. I'm not sure you would have liked him at this. I he comes off. He, he looks and often I think sounds like like a boxer from an old Warner Brothers. Doesn't make movie. sense because he's supposed to be a patrician. So, well, you know. he 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 comes you know more like mm. more, he comes off more like working class. I wasn't very impressed with huh. the performance. There was this one. Uh, scene where he, he's coming to see his, 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 the, the general who was his enemy, who he had just defeated, uh, beautifully played by Louis uh, Kansami. And the guards try Ophidius to... Ophidius is his guy's name. Yeah. yeah. And the guards try to prevent him from getting in, and he mm -hmm. just... And the way he talks to them, the way he handles them, that was the really only time oh. in the play where I really got a bead on the mm -hmm. guy. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I was disappointed. Kate Burton, as the mother, can't give a bad performance, but she has a few moments... But being Kate Burton, she should have had, you know, I, I would have expected her to have more. Uh, we're running very low on time. So okay. I'm just going to say um, it was an all right performance. Look, it's free Shakespeare in the park. Uh, but all in all, I, I would say about two and a half playbills for this production. This is Seawall and A Life. We've seen this play before. We um, Two separate plays, two separate playwrights. Yeah, that's the slash that he was talking about. Um, Stephen, the guy who wrote... Uh, Stephen Stevens and Nick Payne. Okay, Nick, Stephen Stevens wrote... Uh, Seawall. Uh, no, wait, I'm trying to say something else. Can I say what I'm trying to say? Stephen Stevens wrote The Curious Case of the Dog in the Night, mm. which... Was we, brilliant. Yes, two brilliant actors, and, and they are brilliant. Tom Sturridge we saw in Orphans and in 1984, and you can't take your eyes off him when he's on stage. Jake Gyllenhaal does not need me to extol his virtues. He is a, a lovely uh, actor and singer. Um, so it's very odd. We saw this downtown, and I did not like it downtown at all. I missed a lot of the first part um, for reasons we won't go into. I really liked Tom Sturridge's performance. I knew what the story was going to be. This is a play that you know going in what it's going to be. It's two plays about death and dying. And, li um, and life. Well, and life. The second one, really, certainly. If you really know how to extract the positive out of the negative, you can get that. Um, it's, they're, they're directed, the, the direction has changed.
by Carrie Cracknell. The direction has changed in that now they, they interact a little bit with the audience. They definitely speak more to the audience, and, and there's a, they use it as part of what they're doing. I think the fact that it's a different kind of theater has something to do with that. There's a projection at the end that wasn't there before. Um, all of that just sort of covers the fact that there's an awful lot of, of, of the monologue, and you don't need as much of these monologues as there, there, are, there is. They, they go back and forth in time, so he's talking about something that was happening before and something that happened then. And you know it just by maybe he just flicks his eyes over and maybe he turns his head, he being either of them because it happens in both plays. Right. Um, it can make it very confusing at Yes, times. it can. And I bring this up because as I was extolling the virtues of the monologue in, the, in Mojada, and these are, these are fine. They're all well and good. It's an evening. It, you really kind of want to slit your wrist when the evening is over. That's how I felt. However, I, 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 kudos for the, for the acting. Yes. Uh, the direction is very still in, in, in the case of, 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 uh, of uh, Gyllenhaal. He, does some, he, he wanders about the stage a bit to set up lights and whatnot, but he doesn't well, actually they, they do, that do that while he's working. And Tom Sturridge goes up and down on the seawall itself. There right. is a seawall that's now, built one, there. At one point, Jake comes into the audience. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. But that's not movement on the stage. It's no. something else. He's running around to, to, to yes. prove a point. Totally unnecessary. Anyway, I would give this a, a, a three. Um, I would give it I, I, I would four say, for acting and three for what I, it is. I, well, the, fir the first place he will, I did not like. I found it predictable. Mm -hmm. And not overly interesting, despite you know excellent performances. Mm -hmm. I did like the second one better. I felt it was more balanced mm -hmm. and a much more interesting plot: death of a father, birth of a child. And uh, so I would say I, I'd probably come up to an average of three also, because I give two point uh, five for Seawall mm -hmm. and, um, and three point five for, 3. 5 mm -hmm. for a life, uh, which I think is pretty much what I said off Broadway. Well, one reason for ending on, on yes. this is um, yes. here we go. Oops, mine fell down. Um, this is Charlie. You may recognize him. We don't really have a close-up on that. How close can we get? There we yeah. go. All right. Well, well we, we can always see That's Charlie. Person. Charlie has a play coming up October yes. 10th at mm -hmm. 9 p.m., and it is a monologue. Yes. It is a, an right. hour-long set of monologues, stories right. of, about Manhattan in, right. the, in the 1990s. Well, it's called How I Found an Affordable Apartment on the Upper West Side of Manhattan Without Really Trying. And Other Tales of Little Old New York yes. in the 90s. Right. Yes. So... Uh, that's a plug. No reason why you can't plug your own play. <laughs> right. This will be part of the United Soul Festival, so uh, you could uh, get on their website. Yeah, get on their uh, we'll website. We'll be flashing it here, and uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, <laughs> we're going to have it in the uh, explanation. So, um, I think that's where we have to end it. That's where we end it. So. All right. So, when you go to the theater, look for Leslie and me, us too. On the aisle. <laughs>